Austin, Texas. It's The Cube, covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors, Red Hat and Cisco. Now here are your hosts, Brian Gracelee and John Walls. And welcome back here on The Cube, our continuing coverage of the OpenStack Summit 2016, live from Austin, Texas, deep in the heart of Texas we are here at the Austin Convention Center, 7,500 strong, so quite a beginning from just six years ago, 75 people up the street in a small hotel. Uh, the place has grown, you might say. Uh, we're here to talk about the product working group now within the OpenStack initiative, and with us to do that is Carol Barrett, uh, from Intel, and then Shamal Tahir as well from IBM. Uh, thanks folks for being with us. We appreciate the time here on theCUBE. Oh, well, thanks, appreciate yeah. the opportunity. You bet, Let, uh, yeah. let's talk first, uh, uh, Shamal, if you will, about the mission of the product working group. Uh, obviously it's to listen, but you've got a lot of feedback then to put out to the various working groups within OpenStack. Absolutely, so you know, from an origin perspective, we, the product working group membership is formed of organizations that either run OpenStack or build OpenStack related products. And so the mission was to have a forum where we could define requirements that the markets have identified, enterprise, telco, uh, and the operator community that's using OpenStack, and be able to document them in the community where all of the contributors can collaborate from a product management and you know, um, feedback perspective mm -hmm. to help make sure that those requirements are relates to their project teams as well as um, evolve from concept to reality. Mm -hmm. okay. And so then with, within that context, the members of the working group would be how many and from what parts of that ecosystem? Carol, where, where do you draw from in terms of who you want on that committee, mm -hmm. and then what's again the range of uh, verticals that you're talking about here? Well, you know, OpenStack's sort of an interesting open source you know, community and project. It's not about, um, like a volunteer army. It really is a dynamic where 80% of the resources come from 20% of the companies. And so we wanted to harness that dynamic to enable us to be able to bring together the people who have close connections with folks who are in the market, either current operators or prospective operators or users of OpenStack, and be able to get their input, but at the same time, harness the resources that they have inside of their companies to actually put resources against those requirements to make sure that we're building and focusing on the things that are most important to those users. So, so so how do you, do you meet on a formal basis? Is it an informal basis? I mean, how does this interaction <laughs> take place? Because uh, I would imagine you've got uh, a lot of balancing to do you know, amongst <laughs> the members of the working group and mm -hmm. you've got different priorities within mm -hmm. members of that group. So yeah. Shamal, I mean, how do you all get together and then how do you decide so, this is where we're going to focus? Yeah, so we use all of the standard OpenStack tooling. <laughs> so we use IRC meetings, so we have a weekly IRC meeting. Uh, we do user stories that we contribute to GitHub and we do reviews on them through Garrett. So we use community tool, tool chain, if you will, for collaborating on the output. But from a partization and meeting perspective, we also meet face-to-face uh, -face at least twice every release cycle to discuss, you know, here's the top 10 user stories. Now each person stack rank them one to 10. And then we kind of aggregate the scoring from that. And then we also discuss, you know, updates and optimizations we can make to the process, which is our workflow of you know, prioritization as well as implementation of the concepts. Yeah. So, um, you know, for people that are new to OpenStack, a lot of us who have been here for a while, you sort of you know everything, but there's still a lot of new people coming. Um, like for example, AT&T was talking today and they sort of threw up a slide and they said, well, here's the, here's the nine or 10 projects that are part of what we're doing, but then we've got three or four down here. There's always a couple of new projects coming along. Give us a sense, you know, for, for even for the beginners, how, how has OpenShift, Open uh, OpenStack shifted from, you know, we're just doing new projects because there's stuff going on to this idea now of like the big tent and, and sort of core versus, mm -hmm. give folks a sense of how, how the, the community is thinking about sort of what's core and every day and then where's experimental areas and, and areas to grow. Yeah, well I think that the, uh, the user survey gives us some really good information about what people are looking at. Mm -hmm. You can start to see how the adoption is uh, increasing across different projects and that guides what we go ahead and include in our roadmaps. So we'll target the projects that are you know, thought of as core. So Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Horizon, those, uh, and, and projects that have 10% or higher adoption by operators as well. 
Um, then we'll also include projects that seem like they're on the rise from an interest point of view around operators. Things around containers these days mm -hmm. is all around uh, things that are on the rise. And, um, and so we look to those things to guide us as to what's most interesting and important to the operators and the end users out there. Yeah. And, and I would like to add on, you know, as you mentioned, there's a lot of newcomers to OpenStack. As a matter of fact, every summit, usually about 50% or more of the attendees are first time summit attendees. Right. So to help newcomers into OpenStack be able to figure out what's experimental versus what's mature, there's actually a tool that the foundation created mm -hmm. last summit called the Project Navigator. Mm -hmm. And so in the po Project Navigator, they have a set of criteria that defines the maturity, whether it's documentation, SDK, um, whether the project has stable releases. So you can use seven or eight different criteria right. to evaluate you know, the maturity level of the project. So that's, I think, a really useful resource for people that are getting into OpenStack and learning about OpenStack yeah. to better understand what's new versus what's fairly established. Yeah, no, yeah, I know, Stu and I did a, did a crowd chat, we were talking on, on Twitter a couple weeks ago, and that was one of the big things people were asking is, you know, is it, and, and a little bit higher level, you know, is it stable, what should I, what version mm -hmm. should I run? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great tool, but it, it, you know, it also helps you figure out things like, you know, there's a, there's a containers project for integrating and making containers a, mm -hmm. you know, a deployment resource, but there's also a containers project that you know, helps run OpenStack, exactly. and you can kind of mm -hmm. figure out the difference between the two of them. I, I love that you talked about, you know, it's, it's very data-driven, it's user-driven. How, do how do you sort of balance between what comes from the survey and, and what you know, some of the contributors can say, look, I can help move this faster, right? You're going to have expertise from a vendor or, or a you know, large uh, customer. How do, you, how do you balance all that? Well, I think it really is the discussion amongst the team. That's what really sets our priorities and directions. What are the things that we're hearing from customers combined with what we get from other data sources and how does that go ahead and set the top five or six, uh, what we call user stories, which are collections of requirements, that will go ahead and be a synergistic um, target for resources from the different companies in the work group. So it's really a combination of a lot of things. And ultimately what we're trying to identify are the things that are be most impactful in driving further development and deployment of OpenStack clouds. Okay. Now I think within, within the group you have almost your own user survey, right? Um, <laughs> because you've, you've got some very strong opinions uh, and very uh, um, experienced folks, obviously. But, but when you get this information, right, and then you look at the user survey, and now you've also got your own opinions, you ever surprised? Think, wow, you know, <laughs> didn't see that coming, or didn't realize like containers, obviously you talked about, 70% in the user survey saying they have a strong interest uh, in containers. Um, anything ever kind of catch you a little bit off guard? You think, um, we need to gear up a little bit, or maybe we need to shift our focus away from an area that we expected, or we didn't expect. So I, I think from a require, user storage perspective, I don't think we've seen too many surprising things. I think mm -hmm. what we have seen, though, is a timing thing. So I'll give you a great example where capacity management, quota management is something that's been on our list of quota management needs to be more standardized and more robust across all projects in OpenStack mm -hmm. because in the enterprise world, quotas are heavily used <coughs> potentially. Sure. And so we had that planned and it was kind of on our backlog of user stories, but just to sum it, there's a team forming around centralizing a quota library mm -hmm. for nested quotas around all projects. So now that there's development work already happening in the community, it, helped, it made us kind of escalate our prioritization of that story so we can at least make sure we can share our data with them in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then when you get information at the end of the day, I'm putting it to use, where is it going? Like within OpenStack itself, within you know, the initiatives uh, here. I mean, which groups get, how do you determine who, what's going to go where? Uh, what is that relationship that you have with the other groups within OpenStack? How mm -hmm. does that work? Well, we have a multi-prong attack to go ahead and try and get the right information to the right folks with the right level of detail at the right time. We are looking to use the cross-project team and their uh, team meetings and repos as a key central point for disseminating information as well as bringing together experts from the different projects to be able to talk about how do we want to design and implement this capability across all the OpenStack services. So that's a key place where we start the conversation on a user story to be able to get the right people plugged in. Then inside of the work group, we also go ahead and have 
across project liaisons. So that's a community standard approach for um, helping projects that have some adjacent relationship to each other to stay current on what's being implemented and how they're moving forward and what their plans are. So we'll have cross project liaisons in um, not quite all of the projects, but as many as we can, which is a pretty big number at this point. And they work to bring the user stories into those teams and to socialize them, answer questions, help bring out the nuances of what's going to matter most about that user story to the different project teams. So those are our two key tools that we use to get engagement and to help move it forward in implementation in the projects. Yeah, well, one of the things, if, if you've been paying attention to OpenStack for a while, Every six months, I mean, there's a drumbeat. Every six months, there's, there's, it's, that cadence has been, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's never, it's never slipped. It's never moved. Um, you know, the, the, the OpenStack Foundation is a, is a really good case study in how to get software out, how to work collaboratively across a lot of teams. Do you ever get uh, sort of end customers, if you will, that come and go, can you teach us what you're doing to, to make all this stuff? Because that's something that every one of them is trying to, how do I do continuous integration? How do I get, how do I run multiple paths of software? Do you get that question ever or often? And, and people you know, want to learn not only just about OpenStack, but, but the people in process stuff as well? Yeah, so I do. You do. Um, from inside of, actually I was having a conversation with uh, folks from OpenHPC recently mm -hmm. who were talking about, you know, what are some of the, the tips and tricks that we can learn about from OpenStack and how do we apply those to the community that we're building and the, the structures that we're putting forward in our organization and our community, um, you know, to uh, help accelerate them. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a common uh, question that I, that I find people ask right. from a lot of different perspectives, but it is pretty common. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's becoming it's becoming sort of a differentiator for business. People have to learn how to do software. Everyone talks about software eating the world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a fantastic thing. What, what yeah. are you excited about? I mean, you, you get you get. I mean, mm -hmm. it, this show is all about innovation. You get a chance to see all of it. But personally, either a project mm -hmm. or something you're doing. What, what what's getting you excited? You know, at, at this you know. 10 year, you know, 10, 10 uh, anniversary of, of the event. <laughs> you know, for me, I really like the fact that the maturity of the community as a whole, right? Like I love the OpenStack community, I love the collaboration as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and just seeing some of the foundational aspects of cross-project initiatives now going to the next level of sophistication, maturity, and ramping up, I think that's what I'm process-wise really excited about, is just the potential of, you know, capabilities of projects collaborating more frequently with each other to deliver even greater functionality for the cloud in the future. Yeah, for me, it's seeing the conversation go higher levels in the stack. So we've talked about the different infrastructure components and what they, you know, uh, what the projects need to have and the capabilities. And now we're starting to hear more and more about the application developers. Right, so not only are we creating the software and having uh, clouds stood up with OpenStack, but now people are saying, how do we ensure that those cycles get consumed in a way that delivers value to the business? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a sign of you know, getting stickiness in the market and really broad-based adoption. Yeah. Well, let me just turn Brian's question a little bit on, on, on its side. I hate to end on a down note, <laughs> but, but, but so let's look at it as an opportunity perhaps instead of a threat. Um, What's that uh-oh or the hmm that, that you see that, that you do think needs to be addressed or that you think you can more constructively address in order to maybe grease the skids a little bit better and get things moving a little bit better in a different direction? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Shamal? I mean, I think my answer will probably be the same because I think that's partially <laughs> why I'm excited about cross projects is because it has been a need and at the same time, it was a risk. It's an identified risk and now there's progress we made against it. So I would say that's probably the focal point that I'm both happy about and worried about is collaboration at the cross-project level. Yeah. Carol, you're nodding your head. Like, this, this sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. You guys compare scripts before you came out. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think for me, it's it's building upon that. It's the we're in the midst of looking at how are we going to evolve our workflow as a community. Right, we have the two releases, we have two summits a year. When we started out as 75 people in the design summit, that worked one way. Now that we have, you know hundreds to thousands in the design summits. How do we re-engineer all of that so we can be as productive and as um, efficient and innovative as we need to be to continue to drive the software forward? So I think that that provides us tremendous opportunity to figure out how we redefine it as we go forward, but change is always you know, uh, also a risk. And so making sure that we think through it comprehensively and we put it into effect rapidly, I think will be really important for us. 
And, and that you just touched on that too, change, risk. Um, how do you get, maybe those who are a bit, uh, they had, there's some trepidation, how do you push them off the diving board? I mean, it was like even within your working group, because I'm sure there has to be some convincing that has to be done with a few folks who might want to move a little slower than uh, maybe the group might. How do, you, how do you get them to that point? Shamal? Yeah. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is, again, collaboration. So in the working group, for example, when we have that, we've understood that we all have, you know, organizations that are consuming or building OpenStack products, and we all have our own differentiated needs. But at the same time, OpenStack as a platform is a foundational layer for all of us. So there might be things I might want today that someone else might need tomorrow, mm -hmm. but if there's enough of us saying that we need this today, the person who wants it tomorrow will eventually say, you know what, I'll chip in today, so you chip into something else tomorrow. So yeah. I think there's this give and take of, yeah, this was lower on my priority, but if we can all make sure that we all invest equally in prioritized requirements, mm -hmm. then we make a path for all of them to eventually be implemented. So I think it's that give and take of, I'll give today so I can get tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I think the marketplace has evolved. I mean, you, as, a, as a foundation, you're going as fast as you can, and then the marketplace offers, you know, if I don't want to run on Mataka, I can run on the previous release or two previous. That's okay, they'll support you. So it, it, the market has sort of worked itself out in terms of where do I want risk, where do I want speed, and, and that's a nice thing to see. It, you know, it's mm -hmm. the yeah. way markets should work and communities should work, I think. Yeah, and yeah I think so too, and especially when you look at the markets that we're looking to serve. Right, they're large and they're diverse. So being able to have a robust ecosystem that, e that OpenStack can interoperate with so people can create the solution stacks that they need is really what's going to make the difference, I think, for us. Very good. Well, thank you both uh, for joining us here on theCUBE. We certainly appreciate that and wish you continued success, uh, both at Intel and IBM, but obviously <laughs> with the working group as well. Thank you uh, so much. Thanks for being with us. And we will continue with coverage here of the OpenStack Summit 2016 from Austin here on theCUBE in just a bit. It's always fun to come back to the